Lock and load. Civil war. When does the shooting start? Those are just some of the comments posted to pro-Trump and QAnon forums online, as reported by my colleague Ben Collins, after news of the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago broke. Other comments include, summertime was made for killing fields. And even conservative YouTube influencers got in on it as well. Quote, tomorrow is war. Sleep well. It's raising new fears of political violence, and Trump himself, the inciter-in-chief, is, of course, ramping up the rhetoric. Here are just parts of his statement on Monday about the surge. My beautiful home is under siege, raided and occupied. It's prosecutorial misconduct, the weaponization of the justice system. Such an assault could only take place in broken third-world countries. The lawlessness, political persecution and witch hunt must be exposed and stopped. Of course, there was no evidence to back up any of those pointed claims. And we've already shown you what Trump's supporters and hosts were saying over on Fox. But the threat of violence isn't theoretical, isn't online only. Those comments on those forums I just read, according to Ben Collins, they're the same forums where a lot of January the 6th planning happened. So does this moment mark a new, darker, even more paranoid style? for U.S. politics. Here with me now is NBC News senior reporter Ben Collins, who's been closely following this story, and Olivia Troy, chief political strategist for the Renew America movement and former Homeland Security advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. She calls Trump's comments calculated, saying they're signaling a call to arms to his supporters and far-right social media is buzzing with violence. Thank you both for joining me, Ben. How bad is the rhetoric you're seeing on far-right forums? How concerned should we be? It's as bad, I would say, as uh, any time since January 6th. It is uh, incredibly vitriolic. And I would say when the people who are uh, who have six million followers or subscribers on YouTube are bringing up how, you know, this means war now, they're not dancing around the issue. They're talking about crossing the Rubicon, stuff that people uh, in the QAnon space used to say before January 6th. When those people are talking about civil war, um, you can only imagine how bad it is uh, in the... Uh, Groiper chats that I'm in, for example, or the white nationalist chats that I'm in. Uh, it is so much worse there, uh, where they're talking about uh, active assassinations or murders. It's it's very bad wow. out there. And I will say, by the way, we, we, you know, we have some reporting that some of these people are the same exact people who stormed the Capitol on January 6th. They are out. They are free, largely. Um, you know, a lot of these people who were charged with effectively trespassing are still out there. Um, I know a lot has been made of people being in jail cells, especially at CPAC. There was that like art exhibit of people crying in a jail cell or something. That's not most of these people. Most of these people are still out yeah. and about, and they're ready for a fight. Olivia, you used to work in the Trump administration. You used to work on Homeland Security. How much of this rhetoric that the right is putting out, including that statement from Trump that I just quoted from, how much of that is being put out knowing that it could incite the base? Oh, he knows exactly who his audience is, and he knows exactly what he's doing. And he's basically spelling out the, t the talking points for other news networks like Fox News and other political pundits. And unfortunately, you're seeing it from elected officials themselves in the Republican Party. I think that is what is most striking and most disturbing about all of this. Instead of, you know, leaders saying, you know, we need to let this investigation play out, take a step back from it, they're flat out undermining and attacking the FBI, the Department of Justice, Kevin McCarthy tweeting about, Merrick Carlin, I mean, this is dangerous stuff because not only are they, you know, undermining the process and undermining government institutions, they're playing into the hand of these types of narratives that fuel this extremism that drives political violence. And Ben, you also reported Monday night that there was talk of a rallying at Mar-a-Lago. And sure enough, Trump supporters did gather outside the resort there on Monday night. To be clear, there were no reports of physical violence, thankfully, but there were reports of some shouting matches. There is a direct line, is there not, between the words used by Trump and co, the words on online forums, and then the actions of certain Trump supporters. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, at that uh, quote-unquote rally last night, which is, you know, a couple dozen people, uh, there was a Trump-Pence uh, banner held on the bed of a truck with Pence crossed out. Um, that's because, you know, in, in their world, in, Mike Pence is a traitor. Uh, and that's from the mouth of Donald Trump himself. So uh, all of this stuff is top down. I will say the difference between January 6th and now, there is not that platform that Donald Trump had to give minute-by-minute minute instructions. 
for weeks before January 6th, Donald Trump was telling people to go to a specific place on a specific day, rally. It's going to be the it's the uh, be all end all day, January 6th itself. There is no date like that right um, now. It provides different challenges. It's a different thing. Like you might get uh, smaller sects of people throughout the country more angry, um, but it does work to effectively diffuse it in the long run. I'm glad you mentioned Mike Pence, um, Ben, because, Olivia, obviously you worked for Mike Pence. You and I have discussed him many times on this show, his spinelessness, post 1-6. Pence was one of those Republicans who has come out loudly on social media to condemn the FBI search to defend Donald Trump's home. It's interesting because we talk so much about this. The reason that they're able to incite violence and move the party further and further to the right is because no one stands up to them within the party, not even people who have had their own lives threatened by the same, you know, monster that was created. Yeah, Mike Pence should be ashamed of himself for uh, putting that out there on social media. That was absolutely ridiculous. Like, I've, I've, I've given him credit for his actions on January 6th, but the fact is he's fallen back in line and he's consider continuing to embolden this type of narrative. He knows better. He knows the situation. But I think, once again, he's pandering to an audience out there. And if the entire Republican Party, apparently, outside of maybe Liz Ch Cheney and Adam Kinziger, has decided to unite and say, you know, we're going to discredit this entire thing no matter what, even though it means that we're standing against the rule of law and we're standing against justice, which is, you know, America, we're a country of yes. laws, we're a democracy, we're a de where justice actually matters and no one is above the law. But I guess Mike Pence has decided that he's going to go along with it because otherwise you get ousted of the party and he's still trying to find the you know middle road calculus for his own political power and standing. And I think, honestly, yeah. it's it, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's so embarrassing uh, for me to, for, to watch him do that, honestly. And, of course, none of this is happening in a vacuum. Ben, we've seen an escalation in violent rhetoric for years now. And this moment went viral online, this chilling moment from last October at a Turning Point USA pro-Trump conference. Have a listen. When do we get to use the guns? No, and I'm, and, I, and I'm not, that's not a joke. I'm not saying it like that. I mean, literally, where's the line? How many elections are they going to steal before we kill these people? So in the 90s, Ben, we saw where anti-government and paranoid black helicopters rhetoric got us. Timothy McVeigh, Oklahoma City, an explosion in domestic terror attacks. This feels like the 1990s on steroids. Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, last night, one of those big comments on that on the largest thread, thread on the Donald said, when does the shooting start? That's a reference to a Donald Trump quote that they continue to reference, you know, when the looting starts, when the, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. That was a uh, widely known meme in this space now. That's what's happening. They are ready to fight. Look, uh, you know, these people um, are constantly told that their Second Amendment rights are to or exist um, for some government takeover that is to come at some point. And uh, this is what they want. They want this big moment where they can all come together and say, ah, yes, this is the time to go and fight back, to finally use the weapons that we've been uh, stockpiling all these years. There's a lot of talk about this right now, about how badly they want to use these weapons uh, and how badly they want the civil war to start. They think this is their last stand.